IRS code 1031. Uh, 1031 exchanges or Starker exchanges, it's pretty much a way to defer capital gains tax from an investment property for a later time and, and reinvest those proceeds and funds into a new investment property. I want to preface this video by saying just a regular guy eager to learn and grow any topics I'm interested in. I research those topics and make content about those topics, but I only research stuff that I'm interested in. So anything re uh, real estate, sales, business, personal development, mindset, finance, economy, stuff I'm interested in, I research and I post Post my findings here. Obviously, you have to consult with a, a CPA or a tax expert or a 1031 exchange company if you're looking to do a 1031. But if you're interested in real estate investing and learning and growing more about that topic, uh, that's what we're going over on this channel and that's what we're going to be going over today. So what are we going to be going over? 1031 exchange, we're going to go over the process of doing a 1031 exchange, what a 1031 exchange is, what's the purpose, what does it do, uh, the, the different types of a 1031 exchange, we're going over the rules you have to follow to do a 1031 exchange and then we're going to go over if you're unable to find a deal through the identification period which is 45 days um, we'll get into that a little bit later but what are you going to do if you're unable to identify uh, replacement properties in the 45 days that you have and what you should do with the funds and then we're also going to go over the benefits of a 1031 exchange. So let's just go over it. The icon you're seeing in front of the screen right now is the 1031 exchange process. And it is about five steps. Step number one would be to identify a QI. It's gonna help you not touch the funds because if you touch those funds, you'll be ineligible to do a 1031 and you will get taxed. Hit with that capital gains tax bill on the profit or the gain or the proceeds or the equity or whatever you want to call it when you're trying to do a 1031. So you have to work with the QI. So identifying a QI, I would preface this whole process with making sure a 1031 is the right move for you. If you have an investment property and you want to move your equity, maybe forced appreciation or natural appreciation or whatever equity you have from an investment property into another investment property of same equal value or greater value, and you don't want to pay capital gains tax, you want to defer it into a later time, maybe, just maybe a 1031 exchange is probably a good idea. So that would be a preface of this whole process. Make sure it's right for you. If it is right for you, identify a QI, list your relinquished property, sell your relinquished property. The sale of your relinquished property starts a timer. It's a 45 day period in which you have to identify replacement properties. Once you identify replacement properties, you have 135 days to close on, on the replacement properties that you listed. And we're gonna go over the rules of, of what you can list, how you can list them, and, and all, the, all those type of little uh, nuanced details that you have to follow um, when trying to find a replacement property. Uh, 135 days to close on that replacement property after you've identified them, which gives you a grand total of 180 days from the sale of the relinquished property to getting the, the funds uh, closing onto the replacement property. So step number three, when you're selling the relin uh, relinquished property, the, the, the property that you're going to be replacing, the sale proceeds, the, the funds and the money and the equity, whatever you want to call it, needs to go to your QI so you don't touch the funds. And then those closing funds are going to also be handled by your QI and it's going to help you close uh, the replacement property. So we went over what the process looks like. Now a 1031, what is a 1031 exchange? It's IRS, I think it's 26 IRS code 1031. And then there's a bunch of different little sub, you know, A, B, C, F, uh, which is the IRS code and, and the laws that you have to follow. But when you sell a property, with gain, significant taxes are due. This is called capital gains tax. Unless you're in a tax bracket of, I think, 10 to 12%, then you won't have to pay any capital gains tax. But if you, if you have significant equity in a property and you've owned a property and you've generated rental income, you're probably not in that uh, taxable 10 to 12% bracket where capital gains tax doesn't apply. Significant taxes are due when you sell a property. A 1031 exchange allows you to defer those taxes for a, late, for a later time. Eventually, those taxes will be due. Unless you die, your heirs and your beneficiaries won't have to pay all the deferred payments that you that you owe. Defer, 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 and you just keep on deferring until you die. Your heirs and your beneficiaries won't have to 
get hit with all of those deferred bills that you would have had to pay if you stopped the process and, and just cash out. To simplify a 1031, it's just a way to transfer equity from one investment property to another while deferring capital gains tax to a later time or death. We kind of just went over that. The different types of a 1031 exchange, so there's four kind of main types of a 1031. The number one most common type of a 1031 exchange is a defer exchange. And it's that process that I listed in the beginning of the video where you would um, sell a relinquished property and then 45 days to identify and then 135 days to close on that property. That's a deferred. The reason it's called deferred 1031 exchange is because there's there's just a gap in between the sale of the relinquished property and the purchase of the replacement property, calling it a deferred. Now there's a simultaneous 1031 exchange and it's exactly as it sounds. The, the sale of the relinquished property and the purchase of the replacement property fall onto the same day. Typically you would use the same uh, title company and, and just to keep things simple, but sale of the relinquished, purchase of the replacement, happening all on the same day, you'd call that a simultaneous 1031 exchange. There's a reverse exchange. A reverse exchange, just as it sounds, it's it's the reverse of the deferred exchange. So you would buy a replacement property before selling your relinquished property, and then when you sell the relinquished property, that those funds purchase the replacement property. You're just doing things backwards. When you do a reverse exchange, the 180 day rule does still apply, and, and you still have to apply that time gap when you're doing a reverse exchange. A 1031 improvement exchange, is just a normal 1031 exchange except when you sell your relinquished property the the funds can be used to purchase a replacement property as well as those funds can be used to improve the replacement property so there's a ton and when you're doing 1031 exchanges and deferring these taxes there's a ton of rules a uh, ton of uh, uh, state by state little nuances that you have to follow. So you have to work with either a 1031 exchange company, a CPA, a tax professional, someone that knows more than me. Don't take my research and all this shit I did learning about it and, and, and take it into action right away. You have to work with professionals. And then the rules. So the number one rule is that 45 days, whoever invented the tax code for a 1031 exchange wasn't a real estate investor because 45 days to identify uh, properties that you'd like to replace isn't a lot of time to find a good deal. That 45 day period often causes real estate investors to make hasty, bad investments and bad decisions. So you have to be wary of that. Once that you know timer starts, you don't have a lot of time to find a replacement property. 180 days to total time and 135 days to close. So you're 45 and 80. Getting into the rules of a 1031 exchange, you have to buy a property that's value is at least equal to that of your exchange or greater um, to avoid the capital gains tax. You can do it over and over. It's not really a rule, but it's, you can keep doing it and you can keep deferring that capital gains tax. Has to be an investment property, so you couldn't take a personal uh, let's just say like a single family home that's your primary residence that is not income producing and not an investment property, something like that you wouldn't be able to 1031. But if you convert it into a rental before the sale of the relinquished property, then you'd be able to 1031. That also work with a professional because I know there's certain time frames that it has to be a, a investment property for before you can turn it into a quote unquote investment property in the eyes of the government. Um, but that varies state by state, so you, you always got to check and work with uh, people. And I'll give you a couple people you can work with here in a second. But the 100% rule states that you need to reinvest, and this is why you work with a qualified intermediary during a 1031 exchange, is you have to reinvest 100% of the proceeds from the sale of the relinquished property into the replacement property. Even though if it's an improvement 1031 exchange, a deferred 1031 exchange, a reverse 1031 exchange, uh, a simultaneous 1031 exchange, any type of 1031 exchange, 100% of the proceeds from the relinquished property have to go into the replacement property. 100% of those funds. If you touch those funds, you will get hit with the capital gains tax. Uh, the rules vary state by state. You can't 1031 a personal property without first converting it into a rental property. So there's three ways and three different kind of rules you have to follow when you're doing a 1031 exchange, no matter what it be. During that identification period, 
Let's keep it simple. Let's, let's use a deferred 1031 exchange, that normal process that I listed in the beginning of the video. You take a million dollars, buy a, or you secure funding of a million dollars uh, via good debt and a loan, whatever. Uh, you buy a duplex, million bucks, forced appreciation, natural appreciation, whatever, goes up to $2 million. A uh, million dollars worth of equity or funds you want to transfer over into a new investment property. You sold it. Boom. I got a million dollars. I don't want to hit with capital gains tax, so I want to invest this. That 45-day window uh, starting the clock of the identification period, there's three rules you have to follow. You can either list three properties or you can list unlimited properties as long as the value of the properties you listed in option number two, the unlimited properties, doesn't exceed 200% of the value of the funds that you're trying to 1031 exchange. Rule number three is pretty interesting, the 95% rule. You can list unlimited properties greater than the value of 200%, so you're breaking the first two rules. You can break those two rules as long as, so you list unlimited properties greater than 200% value, you have to purchase 95% of all the properties you listed if you're doing uh, way number three. So um, that's pretty cool, but you, you have to buy 95% uh, of, of the properties that you identified during your identification period. You have to work with a QI, we already went over that. The benefits, if we were just to simplify the benefits of a 1031 into the most uh, simple sentence in the world, we already went over this, but to defer capital gains tax. That is the entire purpose and benefits of a 1031. Um, you put a little new tangent on that uh, while investing into another real estate investment and enjoying the, the cash flow in between. Um, if you're unable, so this is this is pretty cool. Let's say you're you're doing your 45 days, you can only find bad deals, nothing's profitable, you don't want to invest into any of these deals because they could be detrimental to your wealth creation or whatever your goal is, right? You, you have this equity from whatever property you're selling. If you fail to f identify properties and, and complete identify uh, property identification in that 45 days, you can take that money, put it into something called a Delaware Statutory Trust, which is a combination of a lot of other uh, investors' money. And most of the time, those trusts invest into large uh, real estate multifamily deals or commercial deals. Your return is often lower because the people running the trust and, and those uh, Wall Street fat cats are taking their percent as well. But at the end of the day, getting a smaller return than you would have if you were to invest on your own is better than paying the goddamn government. So uh, uh, investing into one of those Delaware statutory trusts can be beneficial. Hey, thank you so much for watching today's video. Uh, if, if you're interested in any topics, sales, business, real estate, personal development, this, this whole channel is about community learning and growing together as well as documenting a, a, a journey here. So your input matters. Um, like I said, it's all about community. Go ahead and leave a comment down below. Like the video, dislike the video, subscribe, leave a hate comment. Tell me what the worst part of the video was. Tell me what the best part of the video was. If you engage with the video at all, mean the world to me. Until next time, thanks.